How about them Oscars, folks? We taped this show before the Oscars air, and it's released after the Oscars. But that's not going to stop us from congratulating the Oscar winners, even though we don't know who they are yet. So congratulations, Gravity, for winning Best Picture. Mm. And congratulations to Kate Blanchett for finally winning Best Actress. The best director of 2013 was none other than my boy Steve McQueen for 12 Years a Slave. <coughs> Congratulations to our good old Jay Rents for bringing home her second Oscar in two consecutive years. <coughs> the Best Actor Award went to, all right, all right, Matthew McConaughey's skinny ass took home the gold. <coughs> for Best Editing, congratulations to American Hustle. Best Adapted Screenplay, what an upset, Before Midnight. And another upset for Best Original Screenplay, Spike Jones in the movie Her! On a personal note, I got to watch the Oscars this year with my good buddy Craig, and I had a great time. I did too. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Craig, another Oscar season has come and gone. How did you enjoy this one? It went on far too long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love them or hate them, the Oscars are all about celebrating the cinema of the past year. And that's why tonight, Craig, we're going to be watching a movie from 2013. Fresh off the presses. This movie won no Oscars. It was nominated for no Oscars. It's either a talent bomb or a talent grenade, depending on how you look at it, because it is chock full of superstars. And it was written by the most acclaimed novelist of our time. You may approach the bench, Counselor, oh, no. as we watch The Counselor. <laughs> oh no! Oh, good. <laughs> ah, it's in my hands! <laughs> ah! This movie is giving you the palsy, and you yeah. haven't even watched it yet. Yeah, I'm caught in the chair. <laughs> Everything's going wrong now. Released in 2013, directed by Ridley Scott, and starring Javier Bardem, Cameron Diaz, a pregnant Penelope Cruz, Brad Pitt, and our favorite pigsty wrestler, Michael Fassbender. The screenplay was written by Cormac McCarthy. How could we lose with all of these great people? This film has been criticized as being clumsy, bleak, and not very likable, but Scott Foundus at Variety praised the film as bold and thrilling. Production was halted for a week in 2012 due to the death of the director's brother, Tony Scott, to whom the film is dedicated. I'm going to go into this hoping that it's at least better than the last Penelope Cruz movie that we watched on the show. Um, yeah. So there, there, is, there is that. The main character in this film is a lawyer, and as we both know, lawyers are hilarious. Here's your gift. Oh, oh that's Oh, the best lawyer jokes ever. Hear about the lady lawyer who dropped her briefs and became a solicitor? <laughs> I call this basement to order. Adjourn with us over to the old leather couch so we can watch the deposition known as The Counselor. This song always gives me hope. <laughs> I blame Star Wars. Hey, how's it going? Out in the West Texas town of El Paso, the counselor and his girlfriend Laura are saying goodbye under the sheets. We are a couple of frisky ghosts. Meanwhile, Maltina. <laughs> Malikina and Reiner. They are out watching cheetahs run down rabbits because that's what you do when you're rich. I don't think I miss things. You don't think that's a bit cold? I think truth has no temperature. <laughs> Drugs are loaded into barrels, which are then secretly put into a truck. I bet they're going to be smuggled. The counselor goes to Amsterdam to look at diamonds. And this will be the first of many long and complex conversations that the counselor will be involved with. Every diamond is cautionary. Cautionary diamond. The counselor is using his connection, Reiner, to get involved with a big drug deal. You'll have to excuse my appearance. I got really surprised by something this morning and it just lingered. I always like smart women, but it's been an expensive hobby. Jesus, counselor, she's a woman. Women don't want to fix anything. 
This guy has got to write a book about women. He knows so much about them. The truth about women is you can do anything to them except bore them. Ryan was like, alright, that's great. You should know it's a dangerous job. Like, there's this super weapon that's out there. The bolito. A weapon so deadly that if they manage to slip it around your neck, you're dead. It does all the work for you. The wire cuts through the carotid arteries and then sprays blood all over the spectators. The spectators. And if you think the bolito is going to show up later on in this movie, you may be right. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for Chekhov's bolito to go off. <laughs> he proposes to Laura and gives her the, her beautiful new diamond ring. Tell me what you think. I have it made with bolito technology, so it'll, <laughs> within five minutes, chop off your finger. There's cheetahs there, though, so watch out. Am I the only person who sees the cheetahs everywhere? No, no one in, in the movie? movie seems to see them. The counselor has to go and track down this guy called West Ray, who has cartel connections. What do you have? I live a Heineken. It's nice that they're on, you know, such good terms considering that Brad Pitt helped his slave go back to New York. <laughs> That's true. But you gotta know, have an escape plan because things get bad quick. I can vanish in a heartbeat. With my money, can you? And with this Heineken. I can walk away from all of this. With the I'm Heineken. <laughs> I think about my life. I can live in a monastery. I love Heineken, is what I'm saying. <laughs> the scene brought to you by Heineken. <laughs> Bye, counselor. See you next time, counselor. More Heineken! Meanwhile, the sensual Malakina seems to be getting into sexy shenanigans wherever she goes. You think the world is strange? <laughs> The world doesn't have a temperature. Wait, uh, hang on. Is there anything from that weird middle part that I'm forgetting? That cheetah looks funny. I really wish in that scene that dog like started talking, just yeah. started using human words, and the movie went there. <laughs> the counselor goes to see Ruthie in jail. Could you help out my son? He's been arrested for driving really fast. The counselor says, sure, I'll do that. It couldn't possibly have any repercussions for me. Oh, you. Yes, you do. Oh, by the way, who are we and why do we know each other? <laughs> Backstory has no temperature. <laughs> the kid, he is a courier of some sort and he hides in his helmet this wiring thing that makes trucks run. They obviously can't be transported without these three wires that any mechanic would be able to duplicate, but that's not really important. You ask a chick to dance, well, you got a better shot. Dancing, you know, hunching over and clicking. Women have funny ideas about sex. Tell us more about women. The things I've learned about women. Reiner tells the counselor a story about how Malakina, his wife, once had sex with his car. What? And we see it happen. Best scene in the movie. <laughs> she has slice of her knickers. With the door open. This happens to me all the time because I got an 05 Corolla. <laughs> women just hop on and grind away. <laughs> appropriate reaction to the situation. Turn on the windshield wipers. Turn on the windshield wipers. <laughs> yes, that happened. Javier, let's grab Brad Pitt and get the hell out of here. <laughs> Ruthie's son gets out of jail. He is targeted by an assassin who kills him in a very elaborate and somewhat inefficient way. Because you can't afford a bolito, so you just have to set up a complex wiring thing and measure out motorcycles and chop off a set. If only there was another way to kill a man. If only he had reached 1.21 gigawatts before he got to there, <laughs> then this never would have happened. This guy has the secret circuitry. The assassin steals the cocaine truck. We've got a problem. Leaving the counselor holding the bag. It's not that you're going down, counselor. It's what you're taking down with you. And the counselor starts sweating. Reiner is set upon and killed. He has the same look in death as he did when his wife was humping the car. <laughs> his little cute little cheetahs wander away. And that's the story of how cheetahs came to Texas. They were LOL cats. Now they're RIP cats. The counselor's fiance, Laura, is captured. In a last ditch attempt to save himself and his fiance, the counselor calls the cartel guy and has a long, lengthy conversation with him. Here's some poetry for you to think about. Where the bodies are buried in the desert, that is a certain world. 
Well, the bodies are simply left to be found. That is another. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. A body in motion tends to get its head cut off by a wire. Because grief is worthless. So the sensation I'm having from watching this movie is worthless now? Basically, the cartel guy tells him that he's screwed. The counselor's at rock bottom. He gets a DVD in the mail from the cartel. It's the same envelope we ship Chad Vader DVDs in. <laughs> if he opened that up and it was a Chad Vader DVD, I would shit my pants and die. <laughs> Normally, I don't like someone shitting their pants right next to me. If you didn't shit your pants, I'd, be, I'd start squeezing you. <laughs> His wife is dead. Westray goes to London to try to get ahead of the heat. If he's trying to escape through Heathrow, <laughs> you're lost already, man. There's no escape from Heathrow. He thinks he's off scot-free, but do you think that's the case? I don't think you do. Yes! Bolito! Bolito! Viva Bolito! There goes his head. Thelma and Louise send their regards. We overhear Malakina on the phone, who says that she knew where the truck was going the whole time. Turns out she's this badass cocaine stealer. And she, just like a cheetah, has manipulated her prey. All these men were just her little rabbits, pawns in her cheetah game. I'm gonna go to Hong Kong now because I'm a cheetah. Well, I suppose there's no problem selling diamonds in China. You can sell diamonds on Mars. That's going to be Ridley Scott's next movie. <laughs> Selling diamonds on Mars. <laughs> He's already got his title. <laughs> the end. I <laughs> got through the plot. That was the counselor, and now I'm going to have sex with this couch. Oh, crap. <laughs> in law school, time is meaningless. But in time, law school is meaningless. You know what else is meaningless, Matt? Most of this movie, I'd have to say. This film told a really simple story. But like those barrels of cocaine in that truck, it was surrounded and submerged in bullshit. <laughs> yes. Scenes that went nowhere with bonehead philosophical musings that circled around and ultimately meant nothing. Yes. Endless poetry and no prose. It yeah. seems like the whole thing was written as a goof. Like, as this joke by Cormac McCarthy, who's like, I just wrote this terrible screenplay. I'll see if I can sell it. The movie was trying to make a very, very important point. At any level of the drug trade, you are responsible. I learned that lesson already when I watched Traffic. Yeah. So I, why I, do I need to learn it again? I wished I was watching Traffic, and I hate Traffic. Yeah. On the road and in the cinema. There's no small talk in the world of Cormac McCarthy. <laughs> no, certainly not. No. no. Mainly because every diamond is cautionary. <laughs> That's right. Or possibly because nothing is crueler than a coward. I'm not sure which. <laughs> Anytime anyone talked, it just didn't, it didn't make any sense. You know what would have helped? Putting a microphone somewhat near an actor. <laughs> yeah. Saying, yeah. Mr. Bardem, you're a very good English speaker. Why don't you try doing that here? <laughs> Bruno Gans talking about jewelry, these things that have nothing to do really with the plot of the movie are the reasons to watch the movie, but you have to go through ten bad scenes to get to an interesting scene. And an interesting scene isn't necessarily a good scene. And you're still thirsty for an inkling of the plot. You can't really enjoy these because you're just like, what the fuck, what does this mean? Why is this here? Is the... Is is this, is this movie going to be about diamonds now? Yeah. You know, sometimes you can just roll with a movie that has an amorphous plot. But you need something. You need yeah. some sort of a map. It can be a really detailed Google Earth map. Or it can be a really vague map drawn by a child on a placemat. But it needs to be something. Yeah. And this movie gave us nothing from the get-go. I'm starting to get the putty swoop panic, Craig. You're starting <laughs> to get the putty swoop panic? The panic is just setting in. I... Am I am reaching for my bolito. <laughs> the Putney Swope Panic bell curve on this one was pretty narrow. Yeah. I mean, you reached the pinnacle and then immediately passed it. I also saw uh, the, a movie Thieves Highway that you uh, lent, lent to me. It's about two and a half truckloads of apples being brought to market in California. And yeah. who's going to win in the end? About apples. And I was like, they don't make movies like that anymore. Where it's a, such an inconsequential thing. I'm Watching that movie, I, you get it. You totally get it's it. It's like, man, these produce guys are shady. <laughs> these apples are really valuable, I guess. 
In contrast, this movie is about something that's beyond our understanding. Multi-million dollar yeah. drug deal that goes wrong. And yet it doesn't have that same weight. Because no, it doesn't. Because it doesn't have people talking to each other like people. And it doesn't have a world that resembles our world. Not and at all. We've been getting down on the counselor, but let's talk about what was good about it. Beautiful <laughs> opening credits. <laughs> I like the bolito. That's <laughs> yeah. pretty cool. Well, that was the counselor. It was quite an experience, which you yourself could put yourself through. But you don't have to, really. You don't have to. Yes, Craig, truth doesn't have a temperature. You know what else doesn't have a temperature? Our website. Check it out at welcometothebasementshow.com. There is a PayPal donation button where you can donate to support this show. People do it. They do it all the time. Every donation is cautionary. <laughs> Who are our most recent donors? Funny you should ask. Melissa, who writes, Take your shirt off, Craig! Christian, Kenneth, Jeffrey, Sarah, who writes, You guys create a comfortable and entertaining atmosphere that makes me feel like it isn't weird at all to watch you watch movies. Thanks for bringing all your viewers so much joy. Our pleasure. Julie, who writes, My husband Dustin and I really enjoy Welcome to the Basement, although I don't think I can ever thank you for Fritz the Cat. I get the feeling you'll also be saying that about the counselor. <laughs> Keep it up and give Ernesto a pet from us. Don't mind if I do. Ah. And Michael, who writes, longtime supporter, he sure is, you guys provide terrific entertainment for every movie fan. Keep on trucking. And Kyle Haynes writes, Dear Matt and Craig, I love, love, love your show. I'm 15 and have been a film critic for three years. That's, that's amazing. I wrote my f first film critique at 12, too. I watch your show religiously at home, at school, you name it. I just wanted to tell you guys that I quote you all the time at my school. I even do the Mega Force thumb kiss. You guys bring happiness to so many people. All right. Thanks, Kyle. If I was in high school, I'd hang out with you. Because you are the most like I was when I was in high school. <laughs> like us on Facebook, because people still do that type of thing. And now it's time to crawl on top of and grind at a feature of the show we like to call Seen It. To see with your eyes is not to actually see and perceive. You know, you actually must see as though... Th Hello, Matt, wake up. It's time for Seen It! Ah, okay. Oscar season is a time to go out to the cinema and watch movies. So our theme for Seen It tonight is Seen It at the Theater. William D. Doffenbach, apologies, William, if I got that wrong, I don't remember if you guys said you had seen it, but you should watch the 1999 documentary My Best Fiend. Seen it at the Egyptian in Seattle. Documentary about the ongoing friendship, hateship, working relationship between Werner Herzog and Klaus Kinski. Respect for another artist makes you tolerate all their horribleness. Andrew Lightwin. Have you guys seen The Doors movie? If so, don't you think Val Kilmer looked exactly like Jim Morrison? Seen it. Yes. I saw the trailer in the theaters. It completely ruined Awakenings for me because I was like, I gotta see The Doors. I gotta see The Doors. I can't wait. It did not come to my hometown. Oh. Later, I realized the movie wasn't supposed to be that good. It wasn't, but... When I saw it, I was about 18 at the time, yeah. and I really loved it. I know! If I would have seen it when I was 18, probably I'd be, like, out in the desert taking peyote right now. And it really got me into the Doors music, which yeah. I really love to this day. Yeah. There are a lot of Doors haters out there, especially among the hipster crowd. People who hate the Doors have something to look forward to. The day they go back to liking the doors. Yeah. Which is a wonderful day in your <laughs> life. Because I went through the door sucks phase, and then one day I'm like just driving and light my fire comes on, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Edel C. Colon says, Eastern Promises, a Cronenberg Christmas movie. Seen it. Seen it. And it's hard to talk about that movie without talking about a certain scene. Oh, yeah, the fight in the shower. Yeah. Oh, man, that's that's one of the most intense fight scenes ever committed to film, uh, matched only by the Dan Doherty street fight in season three of Deadwood. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. The immediacy and the danger of it is right there in your face. There is 90 minutes of great movie all around that. It's about Russian mobsters, Cronenberg, late period when he's getting away from the like the body horror. He still knows how to make a body terrifying. Ben the Barbarian says, Seen it? Punch Drunk Love. Seen it in the theaters. Seen it. 
I was not expecting that movie to be so tense. I went to see it with this girl I was dating at the time. As soon as the truck thing happens, like three minutes into the movie, we just latched onto each other's hands and weren't holding on romantically, just holding on for dear life. Another reason that movie works where other serious Adam Sandler movies like Spanglish and uh, Rain or Me don't work is because Paul Thomas Anderson never makes Sandler go out of his wheelhouse. Yeah. You know, that character is an Adam Sandler character, just in the same vein as Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison and all that. But it's skewed to that angle. And people who hate Adam Sandler can appreciate the gifts that he has, but they don't have to put up with the stupid comedy. Yeah. That's seen it, and that's our show. We want to thank you guys for joining us for The Counselor. We needed your support there. We couldn't do this alone, and you really helped us out. I would never have watched if it wasn't for you, Sloan. So you be expecting a bolito in your near future. <laughs> oh, don't threaten me with bolito. <laughs> well, Craig, you've been a real trooper watching this movie with me tonight. I know it was difficult for you, and so Very. I have some good news for you. We're going to be resurrecting an old tradition here on Welcome to the Basement, something we've done in the past. We're going to celebrate auteurs! Ooh! Directors with an unmistakable style who often write their own scripts. Like Ridley Scott. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, not like Ridley Scott. Oh, different okay. ones. Good, good, good. I'll save the bolito for later then. I'm looking forward to this. We're going to do it a little differently than we did in season one. We're going to be mixing it up a little more. What's under the... It's a hat! In this safari hat, I've got 16 names, 16 different directors who've never been featured on this show. Whatever director's name is on the slip, I'm going to pick one of their movies, and that's what we're going to watch. You excited? I can barely unclench my fast, my fasts, or say the word fast. I'm mixing them up. What name do I hold in my hand? You'll find out next time. Oh! See you then. Oh! <laughs> Academy Award winner, Penelope Cruz. On a landfill. Sounds like a Monty Python sketch. <laughs> like Oscar winners in landfills. <laughs> Vanessa Redgrave on a landfill. I think truth has no temperature.